Welcome everyone to another episode of the Adept is Ridiculous podcast. My name is DK. My co-host's name is Bricky. He's going to be doing all the teaching of all the crazy stuff in Warhammer 40k. But before he does, if you enjoy today's podcast, head over to Patreon dot com slash adeptus ridiculous to support us you get access to stuff like our discord which is always bopping uh some really nice uh hd posters posters i was gonna say fan art but it's not i guess technically fan whatever it's really cool great posters big boba um i think a new one is coming out soon that's equally nice so anyway um and bloopers if they happen. So, yeah, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Huh? Uh, Bricky, tell these fine folks where they can pick up some quality Adeptus Ridiculous merch. Oh, well, you can find some quality Adeptus Ridiculous mm. merch at orchid8.com or check it out in the description. You can see awesome shirts, hoodies, long sleeves, white and black and red and stickers. And it Ooh. all looks wonderful. And also, if you are not catching up on the book club, we are reading Void Stalker, the final in the Night Lords trilogy. Get that going. That episode will be up probably near the end of the month, uh, slash oh. beginning of October, which is good because October is when things get spooky. And, mm, you know, I was thinking to myself, <laughs> we're gonna we want to do Caiaphas Kane after this. Yes, we do. But it's gonna be October, so it'll, it'll be Orktober. Oh, so we should do Brutal Cunning next. We instead. might want to do Brutal Cunning instead. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then save uh, Kai 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 F S Kane for uh, for November. September. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. It's early. I mixed up November and September in my head for a second and had to do a quick auto correction. So, dude, you literally went to bed like four hours ago. <laughs> Five. Thank you. That's even worse, considering that you've been awake for like thirty minutes. Yeah, but it's fine. I've I've had less sleep and functioned and done stuff like this before. It's fine. Oh, I've suffered larger injuries in my life. It's okay. Yeah, it's I've, just I've, a finger. I've not slept and done stuff like this before. Not recently, but it's it's trivial matter. This sleep thing. Have you ever seen Three Hundred? Yes, yes, I have. I've seen. There th oh my god, you you referenced popular media, and I've seen it. Holy shit. Mark the time and date because you're not going to get that bingo spot. Let's go. And it's, and it's American. Yeah. Well, it's, a, well, it's, it's, well, it's American it's made. It's American film. Yes, it's American film. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a tale. There's a part in it where one of the guys gets injured and, and the, whatever, what, uh, what, what's his name? Russell Crowe or whoever, Gerard oh, Butler. Le I, I Le Leonidas. Gerard Butler, yeah. Yeah, he, he asked him if he was doing okay. It's like, uh, no, sir, it is only an eye. God has graced me with giving me uh, giving me two. <laughs> Thankfully, God graced me with another, yep. Yes, yeah, that, that, that's you. It's like, oh, it's yeah. fine. It's just sleep. I can sleep whenever I want. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, once this podcast is over, I can go catch like an eight-hour nap. No big deal. An eight-hour eight nap. Yeah. You nap for four hours. You sleep for eight Whatever, I can catch an eight-hour sleep afterwards. All right, that's it. I'm you know, good now. I'm awake. I'm I'm fine. You know who's Darius. not gonna go to bed though? Our wonderful viewers, because they Ooh. need an episode. I'm gonna give them one. God oh. damn it. Okay. Okay. All right, DK. Do you want to guess again or nah? Yeah. All right, you get three guesses. Oh, three? I thought you were just gonna give me one. You get two guesses. Iron Warriors. No. Damn it! Iron hands. No. Damn it! There's a lot now? of iron here, but it's <laughs> there's a lot of iron in this one, but it's not that kind of iron. It's pumping iron. It's it's pumping iron. We're really? pumping iron today. We're talking about the Katachin Imperial Guard Regiment, the oh. Rambo's of the 41st Millennium. Oh, let's go. Okay, I'm down. Yeah. Wanted to do Rambo. a guard yeah. regiment, been a bit. Never, I don't think we ever did a specific one. We did. We talked lots about Cadia, but that's more on the fall of Cadia. Mm -hmm. And so the second most popular guard regiment are the Katachan. Oh, we did Death Corps. That's right. That was our first episode ever. First episode ever. Yeah. Yes, that, that was a bit ago. Um, but the second, I guess, the one you can play as that isn't Forge. Uh, 
We're doing the we're doing the catechisms. We're doing, yeah, we're doing some more guard guard simp simps over guards episode. Let's go, right? Hell yeah, I love myself some guard simping. Man, the guard are cool. I don't I don't mind. Uh, guard. Oh, cool. apparently our first episode was the Death Corps of Krieg, and this is our fiftieth official episode. Hey, fiftieth anniversary, going back to our roots. All right. Actually, when you think about it. Well, no. In the beginning, it was once every two weeks, but oh, because yeah. there's 52 in a year, so I'm like, hmm. Oh, that's oh. right. At the beginning, it was bi-weekly, and then we hit the Patreon goal, and then it was weekly. That's right. I forgot about that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, regardless, uh, we are talking about Katachan jungle fighters, the actual Rambo stereotypes of the <laughs> 41st millennium, and yet... They are incredibly cool, uh, uh -huh. super badass, and actually hold up to their name. Okay. Which is uh, rare because they're such a they're so goofy. <laughs> they are it, it, living in a forty k world and literally just bare arms, bare chest, no armor, knife. Um, <laughs> doesn't seem like it would work super well, but it doesn't. Uh, it's a little difficult to figure out how... I, I think of the accents you could give them, there's obviously, a, a, you know, a little bit of the Rambo vibe if you want to make them all sound like Stallone. Or oh, yeah. you can give them a good old Texas vibe. But I think <laughs> the best one is definitely Australian. Ooh, that's a knife. Uh, not only that's a knife, but Katachan, <laughs> the, the planet of Katachan is known for every single plant and animal to be hostile to humans. Oh, gotcha. And if that if there's an Australian joke there, <laughs> that's yep. You, you got to watch out for those uh what are they? Drop pandas, drop koalas, is that the 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 meme? When you go to Australia, you got to watch out for the drop koalas or something. Oh, I I don't know, man. Instead, we have the brain leaf. <laughs> what? And the Katachan devil. <laughs> The Catachin Devil. Okay, cool. Hey, wait, is uh um, are these guys the ones that have Sly Marbo? Yes, these ones have ah, Sly okay. Marbo rel relative um Chuck Norris meme. <laughs> yeah. So stupid. Yes, it is. I love and hate <laughs> Sly Marbo. I, mm. He's unfortunately not particularly great in the tabletop, but he's very funny. Mm -hmm. Um, so Catacham is actually classified as a Death World. Uh, oh. So it is classified under the exact same, well, classification as motherfucking Krieg. Oh, okay. So, so if you think about it, Krieg is a death world because it was bombed to the Stone Age. Right, and, it's and it's a radioactive wasteland. Mm -hmm. Katachin is a death world because everything wants to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Now, there was an old Katachin joke. I'm not sure if I remember telling you this one. But uh, do you remember the the, the Tyranid Lictor thing with all the, the weird the weird tentacle oh, mouth? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it says there's a Katachin joke. Was like having sex with Katachin women is like fist, or is like uh, uh, wrestling down a Lictor, except your erection has a purpose. <laughs> I don't remember that, but that's a uh, well, wow, that's a that's a that's a hell of a. It's a hell of a joke for them. Uh, these these are a... these are the manly men. These these are yeah. your your uncle who who makes <laughs> like man jokes that are a little sexist at the barbecue. Uh, but in reality, all the Katachin <laughs> women are like are like just as buff as the men. I honestly don't think you could tell the difference from a, from like a, a long glance. You have to get close. Oh, okay. Damn, the Katachin women are pretty badass. Should I just put up a picture of like uh, one of their minis? Damn. Oh yeah, I own that mini. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess I guess I guess you'd have Katachin. Uh, so well, you're, you're big into the guard and they seem like they're pretty <laughs> unique. They are they're certainly interesting. They have a really bad line of minis though because it's mostly just Kadian minis. Uh, but they have a couple um, like characters that they've created with and that's one of them. Um here's another picture. This I mean this chick looks like Ripley. A lot of them look like Ripley, I'll be honest. Oh yeah, she um, looks exactly like well, she looks very close to Ripley, yes. Yes, and, and, you know, NGW is the ones who are high on their copyright train. Um, <laughs> but, anywho, uh, so Katachin, anywho. <laughs> Katachin's a death world, obviously in the Imperial of Man, it's in the Katachan system. 
So mm -hmm. naturally, that is a simple place. Uh, it was established a long time ago, uh, colonized during the Dark Age of technology. Um, and the first couple probes that arrived in the star system, it looked like a normal green orb. But when they, the you know, colony ships crash landed on it and mm -hmm. found that they had no way to escape, they were barely able to survive, stuck in their spacecraft the entire time, while the jungle <laughs> constantly tried to murder their ass. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes now, sense. after a long time of obviously just having to survive a planet like this, the entire populace of Katachin are very, very strong, just from the, the need to be tough. Sure. You know, everything wants to kill you there, and everything needs to be dealt with. You know, it's one of those things where, like, the encroaching uh, flora will... It's like... Remember that part in Jumanji with, like, the vines that would cover the house? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. This is the second time you've made a popular culture reference that I get. And Jumanji is a little safe of an option. That's fair. That's that's really, really popular. That's fair. And I'm a boomer, so... That, uh, both reasons. You like board games. We like board games. <laughs> but but it's like the the plants, maybe not that fast, but they grow really quick. So often it's like, all right, get the flamers. Time to deal with the, the flora. You know, and then you go out to go deal with the flamers and then a giant creature eats your ass. And you're like, oh my God, not, not again. My ass. <laughs> My ass, not again. So a lot of slashing and burning going on. They're constantly trying to deal with like uh, uh, the the encroaching uh, flora and fauna. It's like a twenty four seven job that they're always trying to clear that shit out. Yeah, basically, that's a good way to put it. Okay. Um, even during the thirteenth Black Crusade, when Abaddon was attacking Cadia, mm -hmm. uh, Katachin themselves were actually uh, attacked by. It's like called a, a, a wounded void whale. Oh, what? <laughs> which okay. is a, a gigantic alien whale that is born in the immaterium and just kind of swims through space. And they were under attack by an orc wa led by oh. free Buddha Captain Badruck. Wow. <laughs> that Those are two crazy things to get hit by. Like, just out of nowhere, uh, a wounded void whale... Also, what does a wounded void whale look like? Is it just like a? Does it look just like a whale that's just floating around and swimming in space, or is it like all crazy and mutated by the immaterium? This guy. Um, oh God, that's so sick. Yep, it's a giant whale in the well, space. It, it almost looks like a giant like skeleton whale. Like it looks like a, a the 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 skeleton of a whale just floating around with like boosters on its tail. A little bit. It almost looks like a tyranid. That almost, yeah, it looks super badass, actually. They just kind of float around. They're just around. Um, and actually, after the fall of Cadia, when the pylons died and the giant rift cracked open and split the galaxy, mm -hmm. uh, Katachin was actually caught in the rift and was exposed oh. to a enormous demonic evasion Ooh. or invasion. So after, I don't know how long, after Gilliman's Indominus Crusade finally was able to reach its way to Katachin, yeah. Um, they dealt with the problem on their own. Wow. So, so, <laughs> so they got caught and had, had to deal with a massive demon invasion. And then Gilliman arrived and they're like, oh, we fixed it. Holy shit. They, they didn't even, they didn't even need their help. They just like, oh, we got, we, we cleared it. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Damn. Just a bunch of, <laughs> just, just a bunch of dudes. dudes that are just, I mean, I guess when, when you got guns like that, lit like their arms, I mean, when you got guns like that, who needs, uh, who needs the Astartes? Who needs power armor? Mm-hmm. So Good the, Lord. the, there's not, okay. So they say there's only a population of 12 million on Katachin, which just sounds wrong. Yeah. Um, because That's... of the, the scale of 40 K, they should probably add two zeros to that. Mm -hmm. Um, because that just seems silly. Maybe that's uh, just to show just how deadly Katachin is. Maybe, right? but they're but they're like around. They're not. I mean, there's more Cadians, but it's not like they don't have a lot of dudes. Well, I don't know. Maybe 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 that's the amount of people on the planet. And in reality, the they because they export so many guardsmen. Oh. So there's more Katachin like around the world yeah. or the, the galaxy. But at any one time, there's only like you know, 12 million on the planet, but they're constantly shipping, like, 24 million as, like, Imperial Tithes. Yeah. Um, it currently, in the planet, most of the habitat or the, uh, the settlements 
are basically these giant fortresses surrounded by planes. And because building on Kanachin is very difficult because at mm -hmm. best, vines and, and lichen will yeah. take hold of everything and poison will melt the mortar of the walls and Ooh. crush the bunkers and tanks. Um, on the planet, 50% of the population does not live past infancy. Oof. And another 50% does not live past 10 years old. So oh boy. you have a 25% chance to get to the age of 11. Oh boy, that's those are not great odds. Nope. Um, mm. How are they not survived? Well, I guess I was going to say, how do they not survive infancy? But I mean, it's a, it's a deadly world and... How can you defend the baby when you're defending yourself? And yeah. Not to mention just all the other stuff in the air. Like it's 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 not like the planet doesn't have flying creatures too that probably swoop in and take your baby. That's true, like a pterodactyl or like an eagle just swoop, just swooping in and getting its meal. Like here's some of the things like so here's some of the plants on on Katachin, right? Mm -hmm. You got the brain leaf. Oh no. Uh it's a <laughs> vegetative carnivore. As, as a small tree, but it's not very conspicuous. However, uh, it can attach its tendrils to the spine and brain of any animal taking control of their body. Oh. There's the, the spiker, which uh -huh. is a plant that fires spikes into their body, which contains the spiker's DNA to unleash a bunch of muti mutative chemical reactions that transforms the person into another spiker. Oh. Sounds like a lot of uh, just your body getting taken over by poisons and vines. Oh, there, there's the the Venus man trap. <laughs> We're not being subtle with this one. No, I'm I'm going to assume this does not catch flies. Eh? I'm assuming it is a it catches catches the men. It is uh, it is very big. And it is not stationary, but it's able to move its leaves to attack and eat its prey. Of course. Oh, so it's mobile? It's mobile. <laughs> it's, a mo it's a giant it's a mobile Venus flytrap? It man moves. Trap. There is the uh, the strangle plant. Hmm, where I wonder what that does. Mm, it, it has hmm. very adhesive coils to unwrap itself, <laughs> grab its prey, and drag them back until they die of dehydration. God, GW is so subtle. Mm hmm. Indeed. <laughs> the, the, there's the sucker tree. Oh, no. Which is a fungal-like growth on top of a normal trunk of a tree. But the trunk can twist, can twist and turn when it sees prey to drop its suckers on the top of the heads of victims. And it drains them of their life fluids. Oh, boy. And, fl we and, and flings the sucked-out, like, latex corpse away into a not-suspicious pile of bodies. Oh, boy. That's gross. When you first said, like, were they, were they sucker trees? Sucker mm -hmm. pods? I was like, oh, you know, that it sounds like a it sounds like a good time. And then you described what they do, and I was like, no. Uh, well, mm. we've got plenty more of, of the trees, but let's talk about the animals. Oh, great. I'm let's... sure they're friendly and furry and just mm, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the blood wasps. <laughs> <laughs> which are a swarm of small insects that are known to eat their prey alive, stripping them to the bone in under an hour. That's efficient. <laughs> that is disgustingly efficient. Fuck wasps. Wasps are such assholes. They in are douchebags. And in real life, they're such assholes. I hate it. I hate them. Uh, well, there's the heretic ants. And no, they do not serve Abaddon. <laughs> oh, man. I was expecting a bunch of little ants are like, for the blood gun! Anyway. Well, well, apparently, this is pretty stupid, but um, that's actually, a, that's like a great meme. It's <laughs> yeah. like, hey, look, there's a little ant down there, little ants, and it's like, blood for the blood throw, skull for the skull throw. <laughs> um, apparently, they're called heretic ants because they go after the prey's feet, their souls first. Stop it. I'm not fucking king, that's what the wiki says. Stop. Stop it. I hate it here. <laughs> one one bite will put a fully grown man in the infirmary for a month. Two of them will give you 24 hours without dying, and three bites will just kill them outright. Oh, wow. That, now, that's... you want to know about the vein worms? 
Oh God! I is that V E I N vein? You know, oh, you know it. Oh no! They secrete an ooze that numbs their prey when they bite, so they can't feel a thing. The worms then dig their way under the prey's skin into their bloodstream and lay their eggs, oh, into no. which the eggs then are spread around the host's oh, body. No. <laughs> and then when the larvae hatch, they eat their way into the brain, heart, and bones. When they are in, there is no cure when they are in your body. Oh, that's so gross. Yeah, that gives me the that gives me the the, the heebie-jeebies. I, I don't like that. I hate that. What's crazy is like you wouldn't even know until it was like way too late. Oh. You and even know. if you oh. did know, there's no way to fix it. All right, you want to know a funnier one? Oh, God. Dr Drake bats. <laughs> I just imagine bats that are swooping around. Just supersonic uh, Drake songs. I'm, I was trying just, to think of a Drake song, but I... I just really just couldn't. like flying down, you hear an auto-tune like, God's plan. <laughs> <laughs> and, shoot, and it just, they're like, no, Drake! <laughs> all the, all the, all the Kenneshin guys have like Kanye West shirts on. <laughs> They all have stunner shades. Oh, God. Yeah, they have stunner shades, yep. Uh, Drake bats, they are ogren sized winged, oh. winged <laughs> reptiles Holy that shit. lurk in the upper canopies. And so, so these are basically like flying cars. <laughs> I was going to say, if they're the size of an ogren, like, can you really call them bats anymore? <laughs> they, they come down and they kill, and they, I mean, they just kill you. They, you know, they, they eat, they kill you and eat you, but it's like, just how big they are. Jesus. Well, I guess that's why they're called Drake bats, because it's the size of an actual, like, Drake, like a like a sort of little mini dragon, right? Like a reptile? A little bit. Damn, I was just thinking this little bat that was like Mimi had stunner shades and would just bop and beats at you, but God, that's nightmare fuel. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, there's the Katachan Devil. It's the most famous animal. It is an insectoid predator. Like a like a limbed or long scorpion or centipede. Oh um, my god! I yes. just posted a picture of him. I don't like that. Oh, you're gonna <laughs> like it. You're gonna like it a lot worse when they can commonly be the size of a train. Oh oh no! Oh no! Uh, no. Now they are very bulky and slow moving, though. Okay. Um, which means you could generally outrun them. Okay. However. Because they're that big, they pose a legitimate threat to settlements and such. Oh, I, I imagine. I imagine if they tore, like, they could literally just tear through a settlement. And I, I'm assuming that's some pretty thick armor that they've got, and it's kind of hard to kill them. Most likely. Yeah, th those things are are as can be as long as a land train. Oh, they are very big. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> like if that I was I was thinking that thing was like the size of like a a, a big centipede and I was like ooh that's still gross <sighs> the size of a train imagine the shits that thing takes uh, that's actually that, that, that's where your first mind went and my man all right but well I mean after going like you know just plowing through settlement walls and eating people it's like man Im imagine. If you know you, you you got past one, and it was just like, what is what's that thing trailing? And it's just, you know, it's 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 the size of a train. I know. Imagine what. Anyway, that's. There's something called Grox, G R O X. <laughs> Grox, um, they're found okay. in Catachim. These are uh, quadrupeds, and they are very very big. They're like big little dino. They're big old dinosaurs, oh. and they're actually around many different worlds now. They're, they're kind of uh, here and there. Uh, however, they're extremely ornery and nearly impossible to keep under control without some kind of, like, lobotomy. Um, oh. So on Katachin, they have become completely deadly and wild predators. However, they are uh, known for their incredibly nutritious and tasty meat. So they very often create oh. things called Grox Burgers. <laughs> I, uh, Shai posted a picture uh, of one. And man, that that's some dated art. It looks so goofy and dopey. Yeah, that's um, pretty old. But, I, but I'm sure that that drawing is from like the fucking 80s or something. So I can't be too harsh on it. But it just looks so dopey. He's like, D. Yeah, they're really silly. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a couple other ones, but the last one I want to talk about is something called the Green Barking Toad. 
Oh, um, I like this because it was in the Emperor text to speech series, mm -hmm. and it had in, in this part where it had Vulcan, and Vulcan <laughs> was like, "I wish to pet this creature." <laughs> and he, Just and, a big green barking toad. No, it's actually quite small. It, it's like maybe oh. the size of like a cat, maybe a little smaller than that. Um, huh. They look very benign and harmless, uh, but they are like physically volatile. Once it, oh. it feels threatened, it will explode in a cloud of toxins that'll oh. cover everything within a one kilometer area. Oh. <laughs> including so it, themselves. So when you say explode, you mean explode. It is actually a frog nuclear missile. It is a frog WMD. It oh, is a so W it is a WMD uh, F. So Weapons the frog of mass dies frog. From this. Oh my god. <laughs> I was trying to interrupt it. I heard it coming. I was like, maybe if I get this question in real quick, I ah, fuck. <laughs> Frog of mass destruction. Oh, God. Um, so it, it, it kills itself doing this, right? Because it's you said oh, yeah. it gets caught up in the blast. So... Yes. And, and it is so bad that respirators will not help you. And even uh, it oh. will even melt marine power armor. Whoa. They are the most toxic creatures in the galaxy. Damn. There is no known creature w more volatile than the green barking toad. I feel like there should be some sort of way to weaponize these things. Like where like you sedate it and then like you throw it and you can like, you know, I mean, light sedation. Then when it hits the ground, it wakes up. It's like, ah, <laughs> I mean, maybe, but I think the problem is that once they, they consider something a threat, they immediately explode. And how do you make that benign? Like, even if you shoot them with, like, a like a tranquilizer dart, uh, yeah, if it goes true. off, like, are you going to be over a kilometer away to land that dart? <laughs> it's a hell of a sniper shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. It's not worth the risk. I it's imagine. not worth the risk. Uh, so that's a lot of shit on Katachan to make it a little bit more clear how fucking badass these dudes are. Um, the actual Katachin jungle fighters, obviously they have a very Rambo vibe. They tend to carry their last rifles, lots of grenades, and a really big-ass knife. <laughs> a knife? Uh, I'm, I'm talking, like, it's the size of your thigh. Like, it is an enormous knife. And, and you also need to think a little bit of, like, Darwinism and natural selection here. Katachin uh, guys fair. are just stronger, almost in general because yeah. of the year generations like i think catachins tend to be in the upper six feet okay. um, i mean that like, makes sense yeah yeah they're they're much larger they're much stronger physically um mm -hmm. they're, they're a lot they're tougher uh in in the tabletop but if you play catachim you actually get uh plus one strength which means oh. that they put them at the same strength as space marines which, lore-wise, they aren't, but in-game, yeah. that still says something. Yeah. <clears throat> also, holy shit, that picture, that knife is, is it's bigger than his leg. Yeah, it's enormous. And consider, <laughs> look how big that man is if he's, like, that's almost seven big. feet tall. Yeah, if he's, like, six, seven foot, and that's as big as his leg, holy shit. And he's one-handing that thing. That's gotta be a heavy knife. Yeah, but it's his knife. It's his knife. That's his knife. Remember, Katachin knives are the most sought-after, or one of the most sought-after items for orcs. Oh, I bet I bet they are. I bet the orcs hold those in uh, high reverence. Yeah, they do. They also have a mini that looks exactly like the guy from Predator. <laughs> yes, they do. Dylan. Dylan. Hey, you son of you a son bitch. Of a bi and then psh, the meme with the, so, with the gripping it's so, biceps. It's so yeah. good. Yep. It's, <laughs> I, I really, I really like Predator because it has shit like that, but then it turns into a horror movie, and I'm like, this is great. Mm-hmm. I need to watch Predator again. It's been for ever since i've seen it um i just it's, remember the dylan part you can't, you can't forget that oh there's so many predator references in in the catachin once again gw oh, real yeah. real rich with their copyright super subtle you, you couldn't even <laughs> what yeah. subtle references oh golly i mean it's they've a... even got the red headband and everything and the, yeah you know, i mean come on yeah. that? who does that who does that the, um, the, here's a quote for you, my dude. Mark it off on your bingo card. Hey, ching. Um, Jesus. <coughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> this is Katachin, guys, actually on a, a different planet. Mm -hmm. 
And it says, we've run into scorpions the size of battle tanks. Three men died from I-Rot last week, and I've sweated enough to fill a lake. Emperor, help me. I love this place. It's just like home. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. It's just like, it's, it's probably not as bad as home, to be fair. Probably not as bad. I mean, the scorpions are only the size of a tank, you know? Oh, yeah, they're outside of a train. Good point. <laughs> yeah, they have these big, giant scorpion centipedes that are the size of a train. He's like, oh, what a cute little tank-sized bug. Mm. So when you think of how the Katachin fight, um, they tend to be very gorilla, obviously. They're, nah. they're, the, they're called Katachin jungle fighters for a reason. They're yeah. really good at tracking. They're great at hiding in the shadows and in foliage. They're great at cutting down foliage. Sure. Um, they very often are equipped with flamethrowers. That's probably one of their best weapons. Yep. Uh, because to get rid of all the foliage. Yeah. Get rid of all the foliage. Burn. I mean, often. Um, I mean, some creatures might have a carapace, but often flame is a good way to get rid of, of bugs. Yeah. You um, just melt the carapace, right? They like sentinels a lot, which are the the ATAT walkers. Oh, also a good choice, sure. Uh, or sorry, the ATST walkers. Excuse me. Oh, oh, whoa. Uh, hey. Someone's gonna, gonna be... actually me on that one. I'm just getting ready for it. I mean, someone's uh, probably actually drew on twelve things in this episode already. Like, um, excuse me, the pronunciation of Katachin is not a Chan like you're talking about anime. It's Katachin. I, I'll sometimes they do call it Katakan. Um, but oh, that just no. <laughs> that's that, supposed to be a joke. <laughs> well, I, the thing is, is that I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good call. Good it works call. out. Um, but yes, flamers are big into them. They like to use those sentinels with like flamers on them as well. Mm -hmm. Burn through the foliage. Um, they're very big into booby traps. Oh, um, really? They love to build fancy types of mines and, and charges and they... They, they tend to trap things up quite a bit. So often if they like need to hold a position, say like a fortress, and the yeah. enemy wants to advance in there, it, it practically turns into a pharaoh's tomb with the amount of shit they place. Oof. Um, they, they love demolition charges very often, and sometimes they just run at the enemy. They punch real fucking hard, man. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, they're made out of just like muscle. So I imagine... Uh, getting punched by a catachin would be very, very painful because they have like zero percent body fat. Uh, they're super battle hardened from just <laughs> living. Oh, oh, they've got body fat. Uh, those pictures might make him look buff, but don't get me wrong, they got body fat. These are strong men. Ah, okay, okay. The, the, these men are these are bulking. These men are like yeah, yeah. Bane. These are big boys. Okay. You got, you got you got to have that belly to protect your organs when you're doing all that heavy lifting, right? Everybody mm -hmm. getting mad at uh, the Ragnarok Thor when it's like that's that's what a strong man's supposed to look like if he's actually strong. Yo, I think Ragnarok Thor looks so dope too. It's 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 accurate. Also, that's what Thor looked like. Um, they actually do this really cool thing. It's a variety of special devices. They create something called Devil Gardens. Oh, um, no. <laughs> where there are areas that have a large mounds of leaves or tree roots conceal plasma charges and shredder mines. Um, but they also can take the look of like a dead, dead falls, spiked pits, a snare, spring mines, uh, toe poppers, which are shells set to explode when someone steps on them. Okay. Um, Sounds apparently. The, a lot of new recruits say that the objective of these mines and traps is to kill the enemy, but it's not really the course. That's oh, that'll be lucky, mm. but it's mainly to slow them down. Okay. Um, which makes the enemy tend to maybe become demoralized, overly ah. cautious, spread out, and then that makes them vulnerable to an ambush because then they spread out to be more careful. And then a Katachin guy pulls his knife out from behind like a dark shadow shanks you and then pulls you into the trees with him yeah um it, it's a little bit gaunt's ghosty actually they kind of have a similar yeah, like yeah, stealth yeah. they're not as stealthy in fact often they just run and punch shit mm -hmm. um but they can in the good jungle they can have that similar like gaunt's ghost stealth vibe gotcha. uh, but with a lot more traps and a, and just being incredibly buff Whew. yeah i was gonna say they sound kind of like gaunt's ghost but it sounded more like the oh shoot where, where are gaunt's ghosts from uh tanith Tanith, the Tanith first and only, right? Um, it sounded more like they were just about s just the stealth aspect, uh, whereas the Katachins sound like they're just 
fucking savage. No, I'm not savages, but oof, they're not going to stay hidden for long. They'll, they're, they'll come out and get you. Listen, if you want to just call them Australians, that's totally fine, man. They're Australians. And you know what? <laughs> well, at some point, they got to put their shit down, pull out a knife, and charge that damn kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, a catachin would box a kangaroo. I love that video so much of the man boxing the kangaroo. <laughs> to save his dog. Yep, he punches the kangaroo in the <laughs> face. It's so good. That, that, he must really love that dog because that is one metal thing to do. Yeah, uh, kangaroos have big ass talons. Yeah, kangaroos will fuck you up. Like, <laughs> you might think they're all cute and cuddly because like kangaroo jack or some shit, but kangaroos will fuck you up. Uh, so, as for uh, units in the Katachin, uh, obviously there are many of the casual ones, uh, teams, infantry squads, you know, heavy support, ogrins. Uh, but there's one particular one called the Katachin Devils. And this Boy. is uh, actually <laughs> known for having them be a lot more deadly in close combat. Mm -hmm. um, they're obviously still very good with shooting, but uh, it is a reference to their famous kill knives, which I believe are called the uh, um, Devil Knives, or I don't know exactly. Oh. Their, the main thing is their mission is normally long-range penetration raids. Super right. deep behind the enemy lines. They've been in there for, like, weeks to months. And, deal, oh. and, and being able to, like, launch surprise attacks and ambushes and just cause massive pandemonium. Mm -hmm. So these are, like, deep, deep uh, covert ops guys. And they're, they're pretty cool. Um, okay. But, of course, they're also incredibly muscular. So, you know, they get really deep in the back and they break oh, some yeah. dude's neck with their just massive biceps and, you know. I, I would imagine you have to be kind of sort of the best of the best to be in this uh, devil squad. Because, I mean, you've got to be behind enemy lines for months. Like, that's not exactly <laughs> something any old person can do. Like, even if you are Katachan, right? It's very tough, yeah. Yeah, that's that's no easy feat. Like, oof. Uh, often they they also have well, okay. So the Katachin knives. There's three types. There's the Night Reaper, the Devil's Claw, and the Fang. Um, so Very the cool Devil's names for knives. <laughs> Devil's Claw is the big one, I believe. Okay. The uh, thigh right. size, leg size knife. Actually, that might be the Katachin Fang. The 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 oh. the Devil's Claw is a little bit skinnier, but it's longer. It's almost more like a longsword. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, you know, DK, we gotta do another quote, because we gotta... Let's um, go, Jesus! It says, uh, this place is crawling with things that want to eat you. That rifle doesn't put you on top of the food chain, it just gives you a chance to not be at the bottom. <laughs> That's a great quote. <laughs> These I guys are that. fucking fun. <laughs> gives you a chance to not be at the bottom. That's, that's, that should be on, like, every piece of Katachin merch ever. And Shy does want me to remind us about how they treat commissars. Oh, no. So I imagine you gotta be a pretty big badass to be a Katachin commissar. Unfortunately, often the Katachins do not like being told what to do. Uh, they also consider Kadians oh. to be, uh, a quote unquote, a bunch of pussies. Of course uh, they do. Because the Cadians are, are like the city boys <laughs> who are all right. perfect uniform and, and, you know, drilled to perfection. Mm -hmm. And they're like a bunch of little little Boy Scout bitches. Yeah. But they could Commissar, survive a day in my shoes. They, they probably couldn't. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're also way better shots. So, mm -hmm. well, that's mm -hmm. not That may not be the truth. But they, they, they have their own. They're all good at something. Mm -hmm. um, but for the Catechins, often... A commissar will be assigned to them, and very often the commissar uh, is eaten by the local fauna, or <laughs> goes missing. Air quotes. Missing. Air quotes. Very often. <laughs> is that, that that doesn't surprise me? Is, is there has there ever been a commissar that has like gotten the respect of the Catachin and was like served hmm. under them for? Or, or, served with them for a while you know kind of like gaunt i'm sure there is a situation in which that has happened mm -hmm. uh however i can't think of one off the top of my head Oof. <laughs> so a lot of commissars just go missing <laughs> they you know they don't like to be told what to do <laughs> they should stop sending commissars to katachin <laughs> they should probably not send them yeah but they don't know they, they got eaten by the local fauna that's not their fault 
Well, still, it's, how many how many commissars do you have to get reported dead before you're like, you know what? They're better off without it. It's fine. They're probably not going to run from a. It's okay. We don't get commissar. It's fine. Right. So let's let's talk about Colonel Ironhand Strachan. <laughs> okay, let's talk about him. Colonel Ironhand Strachan, and I quote: "Medic, stop whining, Brooke. You got another damned leg." <laughs> He was gr- God graced you with two legs. You're fine. Yep. <laughs> um, so <laughs> Colonel Ironhand Strachan is one of the best commanding officers of the Katachin Jungle Fighters. He's a hard veteran and he has fought more battles and survived more wounds than most guardsmen have eaten hot meals. Quote unquote. Whoa. <laughs> he has a big ass shotgun. Uh-huh. Uh, and he has a personal code of quote, getting stuck in. Oh, Oh, <laughs> uh, I have I have unironically in the tabletop punched almost like squads of Marines to death with his uh, arm. Um, wow. He he is a very powerful arm. Uh, oh, is, so... it, is it is it like a bionic like metal? arm? Yep, he has a bionic arm. Oh, shit. Actually, it looks like half of him, or maybe a little less than half of him is like robot. Uh, you all, he's got he's got a large chunk of him that has a bionic arm and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the main reason of this is because in the line of duty, he was bitten by a giant thing known as a land shark and lost that entire part of his body. Uh, oh. However, during this period of time, um, he was uh, being patched up by the medics and uh, pulling the pins off of grenades and throwing them over the wall. Oh, so that's with, him! That's I remember with this you other good hand me about him. Yes. With, with quote, do I have to do everything myself? <laughs> what a badass! This I guy is an abs. I'm sad that his mini is so old and it looks like trash. I, um, I was gonna say that must be an old mini because it looks like absolute dog shit. But he is <laughs> is known for fucking up a large amount of orcs and tyranids, especially. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has a specific rule in the game known as "been there, killed it." <laughs> Where if he's fighting any monster <laughs> character, he rerolls all wounds, I think. Whoa, so if you like okay. take him against like a giant tyranid monster, he's like, been there, killed it. And you get <laughs> and you get like to reroll all your hits or something. What a boss. What a fucking boss. Love it. Yep, he's pretty cool. He uh he at least a whole bunch of uh, like orbital strikes against the Night Lord's Legion and then went to go fight them in hand to hand. He's mm. a cool guy. Damn, he went to go fight Night Lords hand to hand. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. But I believe him. Damn. Look at that man. I believe he'd do it. He'd go punch yeah. a Night Lord. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Talos has visions about him. He's like, guys, we should not. We should uh, leave. We don't think we should go to Catatron. <laughs> so we got another guy. His name is Stone Tooth Harker. Uh, Sounds like now, Stone Cold. Stone Stone Cold Steve Austin. D-T-A. It was me, Austin. It was me all along. Uh, quote, back home, I once fancied me a pair of Katachan devil boots. Killed me half a dozen of the great ugly critters, but never found a single one that wore any. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking guy. What a fucking fuck. <laughs> so this guy is so badass that he runs around and hip fires a heavy bolter. I was about to ask if that's what was on his disgustingly ugly mini. Yeah, also a very old mini. Yeah. Yep. Damn. He that's... runs around and hip fires a heavy bolter, and he his name his bolter's name is Payback. Oh, that's a great name for a gun. Oh, that's a that I I like that a lot. But he, he ha- someone had to do that because if they're going for the whole Rambo thing, you got to have someone that has like that big belt magazine strapped over their uh, arm and everything. You gotta, since GW's being so subtle about you know references, you gotta have the. <laughs> All right, you want to know what his greatest uh, claim to fame was? Yeah, I absolutely do. Uh, it was a battle against the Tyranids on a Twilight world where a squad was assaulted by a pack of something called Raveners, which are uh, basically like a version of the Tyranid warrior, but they kind of, they, um, they like burrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have like little slinky tails uh, bursting from beneath the planet. And within seconds, his ammunition loader was torn apart by the claws while the rest of his squad were doing their best to stay alive. So Harker leapt upon the closest beast without pause wrapped his massive biceps around their throat, 
and the Ravener writhed to try to buck him off, but his grip was too strong, and he squeezed until the creature's neck made an audible crack, and oh. and it went limp. And then he hipped his heavy bolter from its stand and uh, open fired, uh, hip fired the rest and blew the rest of them to death. Whoa. So uh, that, that Tyranid creature that Shy just posted, he jumped on its back and with his fucking uh, giga, giga biceps, his, his physical <laughs> thighs for arms just went crack. That, oh, wow. That's, that's, that's these a lot. Dudes, these dudes <laughs> fuck, man. They yeah. fuck. I, I, I was going to say, I kind of hope they don't fuck because I think they would fuck whatever they were thrusting into, into oblivion. No, and no, no, would, man. Remember, it'd just be a bloody stump. Remember, was, this is Catechin women. Oh well, fair. If it's a Catechin woman, I'm sure everything is fine. But like, if they were just off world and they were just looking for a little action, I, I, I think they might kill someone. Uh, I, I'm with... just, I'm just imagining like the Catechin have gone to go, dude. This would be such a funny joke. You, you get a, you get a story of the Catechin, uh, to go, going to reinforce like a noble planet. And then, like your your guardsman guy starts to get hit on by like the the more um, risque like noble's daughter, oh, and then no. and then you then you have your sex scene, and like she just can't leave the bed physically. Oh, she she like tries to stand up, and she just fucking face plants into the floor. She's like, I can't move. I can't move. I can't move. I can't move. All my bones are broken. What happened? No, no, no. She just can't feel her legs. Oh, okay, gotcha. I, I was going for the humorous, funnier one. <laughs> Not the murder one. I, you, I was I was you going sick fuck. I was going for the grim dark of 40k. Now let's talk about another another man. Let's talk about my favorite Imperial Guard characters uh okay. for, that I run on the tabletop. He's not very good, but I love him. Okay. His name is Nork Deadog. <laughs> no. He is a Katachin Ogren. Mm -hmm. And uh he is, I think, the most respected and highest ranking Ogren that Ogren has ever been. Oh, okay. He's no leader, but he, he's a bodyguard. He's one of the best unquestioning bodyguards ever. He's got a full chest of medals, which is super okay. cool for an Ogren. Yeah, um, yeah. His, and and, I, and here's another quote. Um, <laughs> the Sergeant Major asked me what my job was, and I said it was to uh, do what I was told. He said I was a genius and gave me another medal. I likes the Imperial God. <laughs> That's such an Ogren quote. <laughs> it's a, there's a story I read about him in the in the, the Codex where his commanding officer was uh, getting eaten by a Moloch. Oh which, shit! Uh, if I can post a picture of a Moloch, it's my it's my favorite Tyranid model. Uh, there's a lot of favorites. Today. I say everything's my favorite, but this time I mean it. Um, I Isn't love that on the... the bingo card too. If Bricky says something is his favorite, that's gotta be one of the spots, right? If it isn't, it should be because yeah. I do that a lot. I know. <laughs> um, but there's a, a Moloch, and the there's the Moloch. Yeah, those big are... boy. Those are fuckers. That's those are towel beneath it. Oh my! Oh my God! They're oh Molochs are a lot bigger than I thought they were. I didn't see those towel under there. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, the, the models are also enormous. Also, poor um, Tau. Close range Tau, they're getting so fucked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the the uh, there was like a general or like a like a sort of commanding officer that Nork was supposed to protect. And it was getting eaten by the Moloch. And it was like halfway down its throat. And it was like s fucking screaming for his help. And, and apparently the general was kind of a shithead, but mm -hmm. Nork is, is loyal. So he's like, I'm a common boss. And he fucking like <laughs> runs up, backhands like a termagant, shoots a few shots at the at the Moloch, and then runs up really fast and it headbutts the fuck out of the Moloch. And he headbutts it so hard, one of its mandibles breaks and it breaks a tooth off. Oh, and, and it screams in pain and he reaches into the thing's mouth and grabs his general and pulls him out and, and his half of his body has been digested already. So he's like missing his legs, <laughs> but then he like slams him on his back and he starts chugging the other direction. He's like, I got your boss. <laughs> I do vaguely remember you telling me that story in probably the Tyranid episode. He literally has an ability in game called Thunderous Headbutt. 
Well, I mean, if he if he head butted a Moloch and broke off one of its mandibles, he he better <laughs> he better yeah. have a special rule that gives him an Omega headbutt. Oh, boy, he's got a he good a, model too, actually. I like his he is, model. He is a derpy looking fucker, isn't he? <laughs> oh, he's super ugly. He's an ogren. <laughs> That's true. What's the uh, what's the little uh, hat skull speaker on his shoulder for? I think it might be just to yell at him orders. <laughs> That's what his master just yells orders at him through. That's great. Cause I, it does have the maybe. commissar hat, so it does. I, it might. I'm not quite sure, but I think so. <laughs> okay, cool. That is that is kind of a dope mini, though. That's Holy good. shit! I didn't read this part about Nork. Nork was selected by the Skull of Progenium to serve in the Astra Militarum due to his ability to write his name. N is for <laughs> Nork. N is for Nork. Being able to count to four. And speak fluently and understand orders without hesitation. A rare milestone in Ogren development. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. That's so good. Oh, poor Ogren. <laughs> That's so what funny. A, what a genius. He can count all the way up to four. <laughs> Wait, the the site. Oh. Wait, hold up. Um, the, well, the, he was assigned to a, a commissar named, or no, to a guy named Colonel Grace. Mm -hmm. Grace was vocally warlike as a Catechin officer, but he was old and frail because he's old. Um, so he would bellow his orders from the shelter of Nork's massive frame. He'd just hide <laughs> behind him while he's mowing down people with his ripper gun. Uh, and the sight of the colonel and the Ogren bodyguard became a familiar one through their four-year-long campaign, where the bone-thin colonel would bawling out his orders while shells, shells burst around him and bullets sometimes ricocheted off Nork's skull. Wow. Ogrens are, are beefy boys, dude. If bullets are ricocheting off of his skull, then yeah, I, I guess they are just a smidge on the beef side. They're technically tougher than, than I think, some marines. Like, like in, in the game, um, Marines have strength and toughness of four. Ogren have five. And, like, Custodians have five. Oh, shit. So, so he's as strong as a Custodian? So they're as strong as a well, Custodian? Well, they have the same stats in-game. Oh, okay. Right, it's right, not right. the same, but, you know, yeah. just to, just to kind of give some examples. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about Sly Marbo. All right, let's talk about Sly Marbo. It's the and, parts uh, everybody's been waiting for. You know it. Oh, uh, Catechin and, episode, where's Sly? Where's Sly memes. Yep, if I hear one question, one more person ask about Rylanor, we delay Rylanor episode by another month. Oh, that's right. We have, we have a clock running on Rylanor and the Blood Angel. So if you mention Rylanor, uh, another month gets added. If you Don't mention make me the tap Blood the signs. Angels, yeah, another month gets added. So if you really want them, you should stop asking for them. Um, quotes, Sly Marbo. Not from him, but someone else. A classified transmission is Segmentum Solar, High Command. My lords, this man is a menace. He disregards Munitorum regulations. He, redacted, seemingly at will. He only answers to redact him. Were it not for the gruesome death toll he exacts upon the Emperor's foes, I would recommend redact him. Yet he is a deadly living weapon. He has wrought butchery on Xenos and heretics alike from redacted to redacted. He was directly <laughs> responsible for the redacted incident. And on Tarloth, he killed a little over 300 enemy combatants using nothing but a redacted. <laughs> Unconventional, yes. Heretical, burgeoning on it. Yet through his actions, Garth and Marbo rescued not only the governor's household, but also, in retrospect, the entire war effort. My lords, after long consideration, I can only recommend that you approve the deployment of Garth and Marbo to Redacted and thank the Emperor that he is on our side. Damn, that's a lot of Redacted. He is uh, one of the most, he is one of the Katachin devils and arguably uh, yeah. the most fearsome. And he is full on a one man army. He goes solo. He does things solo. He he kills a bunch of people. He blows up. He like mines a road and he disappears into the world without and, anything. And he has an absolute garbage mini. Uh, he, his mini actually his mini is better than some, but it's not great. No. Look, look at that derpy ass face he's got. <laughs> he got. He got the cigar. He's like ooh. <laughs> Um, so, Marbo is, okay, so, 
Only one person, Colonel Troutman, his mentor and original commanding officer, knows the detail of his past. Mm -hmm. That he was one of ten brothers that were inducted into the regiment, and that during an orc war on Ryza, all were killed, with a tale about a lone guardsman returning back to Ryza, or whatever, returning there two weeks later with the head of the orc warlord with a single bullet hole clearly visible between their eyes. Wow. Marbo gained further renown when he fought off a dark <laughs> Eldar incursion. A small oh. garrison of guardsmen were stationed at the planet and were greatly outnumbered by the, the uh, dark Eldar and were overrun. And there were horrible, horrible details of the long nights of torture, yada yada. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Colonel Trotman led the rescue and eventually found Sly Marbo standing alone and armed only with his knife, covered from head to toe in alien blood, surrounded by destroyed vehicles, piles of alien bodies, and the Dark Eldar's Archon impaled on a spike. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, if I was in a Guardsman regiment, I would not want to be posted where Sly Marbo is posted. Because chances are... He's going to be the only one that survives. It, the concept, he's kind of a joke at this point in the sense that he he's a legend. Among like like among the Katachin, so are similar to in the Cadians, they they talk of Alan, Alanius Pius, the man who stood before Horus, the guardsman oh, that stood right. up to Horus before the uh, Sanguinius' death or whatever. Yeah. Um and then and so Sly Marbo is their their guy. Yeah. You know, he's, he's just a meme. He's a Chuck Norris meme. Well, in in the world of of us and our jokes, he is. Oh, but well, yeah. he has like this is not necessarily memes. These are things he has done. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's because everything like sounds so over the top with him, right? Like, well, he's, he's like yeah. the only one surviving a dark Eldar thing, and he has an Archon impaled, and it all seems a little. It seems a little much. It seems a little like uh, a little tryhardy. Yeah. Whereas, like the uh, the one that stood up to Horus, it's not like he had any astronomical superpowers. It's not like you know uh, he killed Horus and the Emperor. He's just a dude that stood up to someone doing the wrong thing for the Emperor, right? And he still got killed. But he's so the one that spurned the Emperor to you know you're not my son. You know, Sl Sly Marbo is more of a the the question kind of comes down to to what extent were these things true because it was mainly mm. only this colonel trobman guy and he could have probably you know spun a lot of these stories almost entirely for morale purposes the concept oh, well, yeah. is that maybe take every sly marbo thing with some form of grain of salt <laughs> but the point is that he's a legend to look up to for the Katachin men Ah, so he's like the propaganda poster for the Catachin. He's still a badass. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, the, the concept is there. You could believe that he does everything he does, or you cannot. The point is that Sly Marbo as a character is mysterious one-man army who is, regardless of your thoughts on him, very good at his job. Yeah. I, I know he's super popular, so I'm probably about to get a lot of hate. Oh, no. that No, no one should... <laughs> No one should care that much about it. It's just a funny guy. You um, say that, but it's it's the it's, it, 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 yeah. it's the internet. The fastest way to a man's heart is with Sly Marbo's blade. Hey, ba boom. Sly Marbo doesn't take doesn't shower. He takes blood baths. <laughs> Lord Lord Usakar Creed wears Sly Marbo pajamas. Ah. If at okay. first you don't succeed, you're not Sly Marbo. You're clearly not Sly Marbo. I've heard that one. Yeah. Sly Marbo doesn't go to sleep. He just waits. <laughs> Sly Marbo has won a staring contest with a Necron. That's that's pretty good since they don't <clears throat> blink. Ro uh, Gilliman keeps an inspirational pic of Sly Marbo with him at all times in his wallet. <laughs> I could actually believe that one. The uh, Sly Marbo threw Gilliman. a grenade and killed five orcs, and then it exploded. <laughs> I like that one. That flak, good. flak armor wears Sly Marbo for protection. <laughs> Is this, is this gonna be the whole end of the episode? Sly Marble doing? doesn't doesn't have a shadow because he scared it off. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> the official name for Exterminatus is Sly Marble. Oh my god, try in the episode. <laughs> Sly Marble sleeps with a pillow under his gun. <laughs>
Stop. Sly Marbo poked the warp in, in through the eye of terror. Stop. How many of these are there? Sly Marbo does not go hunting because hunting implies the possibility of failure. Sly Marbo goes killing. Oh no. It never ends.